That's that. I'll have Dory read the first application. Well, yeah, I'll mention it. The application of Mr. Jeff Amadon, 111 Jubilee Lane, New Hartford, New York. Mr. Amadon is proposing to construct an 18 foot by two inch pool house on his property. Zoning is low density residential, which limits the height of an accessory structure to 15 feet. Mr. Amadon is seeking a three foot two inch height area variance. This application was tabled at the September 15th zoning board meeting to be addressed further tonight. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Domenico. Uh, I am uh, an architect that was retained by the Amazons. Uh, you have the application package in front of you. Just to give you a little bit of an overview, uh, if you turn to sheet S1 in the application, which is the site plan, It would be this type, it would be this type right, right here. There you go, you have it right there. Yeah. Yes, one drawing is, is the site plan. Uh, basically, the way this Tibbetts Road is, is here. Uh, this is the pool house, this is the existing home uh, here. Uh, what we did was we basically, this pool house is basically composed of three, of three basic pieces. There's an interior space here, which is, a, which is a game room. There's all the support area here, which is the storage room, the pump room. And then there's a breezeway, like an open covered area here. Uh, what we wanted to do was, in order to, as you know, going up Tibbetts Road, you're, you're in a fishbowl with those backyards. There's really no privacy uh, from Tibbetts Road. So what we did was we took, this, took an opportunity to create a screen using this building to, give, to afford some privacy in developing the pool. Now, the pool was installed a few weeks back. And one of the things that I want to uh, share with you on the request for variance for height is that the, the, the grade of the site slopes um, pretty dramatically from front to back, side to side as you go down to the road. The black, uh, the black indicates the grade. The, uh, the variance is for 18 foot 2. That's the height really from finished floor to the top of the existing, um, the, existing the, the, the roof, the highest peak of the roof. The grade, uh, the building will be sunk into the grade uh, as viewed from Tibbetts Road approximately 24 to 30 inches. So it would really uh, appear that the building at its, at its highest point is going to be around 16 feet. Um, so this, this variance here, uh, we're, looking, we're looking for some relief on the reduction from 15 uh, to, uh, to about 18.2. Uh, and um, that's, that's really the application you have in front of you. Why, why not 16 feet? Why, not, why does it have to be 18? I understand what you're saying as far as the grade is concerned, but why, you know, um, why are you going two feet below, with the exception of the grade? Mm -hmm. Why can't you go with, do it at 16 feet? We're looking, the building uh, behind the existing home has ex existing uh, gable profiles of around 10, 12. Uh, I have already reduced the relationship of this gable, the gables on this building, to 812 uh, from, from, the, uh, from the existing home. Um, so given that relationship of this building being in the foreground and seeing it kind of juxtaposed to the building that's in, in the rear, um, the slope at 812 uh, seems to be a slope that was uh, aesthetically compatible you know, with, the, with the existing building, the two-story that's, that's behind it. You're going to be able to see that from... Uh, is it going to extend up above the, the roof from Jubilee Road or Jubilee no. Lane or whatever that no. is up there? No, that's a two-story building. Yeah. Um, this building will be screened from Jubilee. Okay. If you want to come stamp from Jubilee, that's right. We'll see it from Tibbetts. That's correct. Cool. All right, thank you. Karen? Yeah. <coughs> 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 no, I'm fine. Any questions? I just like to, I wasn't here last month, I'd just like sure. to see that drawing you got here because I want to make sure it's going to house. 
<laughs> no, it looks when you, when you, when you pull the driveway, your pool looks like the pool was just installed a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. you can see that. But when you pull in the driveway, your pool looks like it's a lot closer to the side of the house than where it is. But okay, I was at the right house. Yeah. Did you test the water? <laughs> no, it was too cold last night. <laughs> yes, yeah, no. Just check it. But you say you are not really? <laughs> That's getting good. Any questions? Yeah. Fire? No, <laughs> Tim? I'm okay too <clears throat> at this point. <clears throat> we'll open it up. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? Okay. We'll, we'll close. Do um, we have, have we had anything from our neighbors? Any remarks or letters? Or no calls, no letters? Nothing. There's nothing the in the file. <clears throat> okay. No? Um, comments? If, if you go up there, every one of the buildings is huge, you know, as far as height wise go. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to, this isn't going to look out of place there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, I looked at it from both, from both roads, and you're right, but it's probably 300 feet away. Yeah, from Tibbetts, uh, Tibbetts Road, I mean, it's good, you know. So I, I have no problem with it. I, I looked at it, I pulled it and drive my next door, and uh, yeah, and I, I did the same. I think three feet two mm -hmm. inches in the overall is probably is a lot. Why don't we take a look at the at the um, criteria whether the bump can be achieved by the means feasible to the applicant? I think Fred asked that question, right? Can it be downsized? And um, undesirable change in neighborhood character of nearby properties? I don't think so. Whether the cost is substantial? No. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at whether requests would have adverse physical environmental effects? No. no. And whether less difficulty self created? With that said, I'd like to make a motion like to make a motion after the variance you requested. Second. Under the sunset clause. Second. Second. Aye. 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 You all set? Good. Okay. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Good luck. Just to, just you'll have to see uh, uh, Joe for a call. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I put it in. We have that other. All right. Ready? Okay. The application of Mrs. Yakaterina. Kishtanova, Zips Osborne Road in Hartford, New York, who is requesting to expand the existing garage to the house and enclose the front porch. Zoning in this area is medium density residential, which requires a 10 foot side yard setback. The existing garage is three feet from the right side property line. She is seeking an eight foot right side yard setback area variance. Welcome. Thank you. So, Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures on me. I did not know that they can present it as a case. So, but I do have a nice drawing of what we're proposing. So, so, what we're doing, we have a garage here, and we have a breezeway. Uh, it's, pardon my French, thin in the neck to walk in the winter time when it's winters wind is blowing snow over here. So we would like to, garage is getting old too, so it needs to be repaired. Some of the walls are kind of unsettling. So what we're trying to do, we need to rebuild the garage anyway. And at the same time, we're thinking if we extend it closer to the house and attach it to the house, make it attached garage, we could walk into the house and avoid these drafts. <coughs> and it will be probably much warmer and easier. And uh, I understand that we are in a variance because we're too close to the neighbor, mm -hmm. obviously. We're not moving this wall. Okay. So it is two feet from the property line, and we're not going any much further out. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. And also would like to avoid the drop and enclose the front porch. So that's, in a nutshell, the project. Is it, no, the existing garage, is this the existing garage? Yes. Right, that line? Yes. And are you going to widen that garage 
we're widening garage and attaching it to the wall. So we're going to remove this wall and make it a little, little bigger. And attach it to the house. Yeah. You're widening it uh, on the side of the house. Towards yeah. the house. Yeah. We're not, not moving it. We're moving it. Okay. I get it now. And this is just an illusion of the existing front yes. porch. Yeah, because one door, you know, it's too yeah. old. Without whole weight. You can put a roof over it and in the over it over the door. Yeah, right over the door. And the uh And now it's just an old house. Yeah. Little old house, little old house. Yeah. We're going to make it nice, yeah. pretty comfortable. Yeah. It's kind of better for her, but Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, okay, it's very close to the to the line, close to the line of the other side of the day. Yes. Are you moving that part of the garage over? I mean, in other words, is the whole thing shifting over? No, there is, a, we're, lift, we're leaving, leaving the outside wall where it as is. As it is, okay. And you're moving the, the part that's on the side of the garage over to oh, we're removing, closer to your house. We are removing this wall. Mm -hmm. This is the old garage. Right. Yeah, this, this, is, this is like, a, this, uh, is this is a breezeway. This is a little breezeway, right. So yeah. we're going to take this wall down. And, and attach the garage. Attach the garage, okay. Yeah. But you're not moving from here. No, no. Okay, okay, gotcha. All right. We can reach out and touch it. Yeah, I know, you really can. Yeah, it's close on that side. Well, so you're not going any closer. No, 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 no. there is no okay. way. Otherwise, uh, we will be knocking <laughs> to a neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> from the garage. Are you going to use the same materials that you have right now in the house? Are you going to matching. change? Yeah, but everything will be matching. Match. We're probably going to change the siding too to, to make it all matching. Nice, same matching yeah. shingle on the yeah. full structure. Mm -hmm. okay. Hold on, anything? Yeah. 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 Tim? John, anything else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You all set, Karen? I am. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll open this. We'll open it up. With this. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? Yes, ma'am. I live next door, and I think it would be perfectly beautiful if they did what they are planning to do. You live on the grass side, the most affected. In, in your name, for the record. Um, I don't think so. No, no. Can we get your name for the record? Okay. Okay. Is, is, is there anybody else that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? Okay. No other calls, no letters. No. Uh, we'll close. Comments? Yeah, well, you're not going, I guess the big thing, you're not going any, you're not going any you're not going to approach on anybody else. The most affected neighbor is, is in, uh, in agreement in favor. Mm -hmm. If you go through, let's go through the criteria just for the, for the uh, record here. Whether the benefit can be achieved by the means feasible to the applicant. No. Uh, undesirable change in neighbor character of nearby properties. Don't no. believe so. Whether the request is substantial. No. no. And whether the request will have adverse physical or environmental effects. Mm -hmm. And whether the alleged difficulty is self-created. No. I'll move we accept the uh, request. Yes, second. Aye. 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 You're all set? Just call the um, codes to your building permit before you start. Okay. Thank, you Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. It is a key. <laughs> <laughs> the application of Mr. Charles Grossman, 8 Sylvan, Glen Road, which is in the town of New Hartford. Who is um, requesting to add a 24 foot by 14 foot sunroom onto his home? 
The applicant is located at a low density residential zone which requires a 15 foot side yard setback. The home is a legal, non conforming structure in that it is located 10 feet from the side property lines. Mr. Grossman is seeking a 5 foot left and right side yard setback area variance to add the sunroom on the back of his home. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Um, unfortunately, I've not brought any diagrams or anything with me. Uh, everything uh, in the package that was presented to uh, your codes people uh, shows this. However, if you like, uh, if I can use your whiteboard, I can basically describe what we're asking for here. Would that work okay? Well, we, you can do that. We, we, I think we oh, you have all the. Oh, okay. okay. You've got it. All right. Um, uh, if you take if you take a look at that uh, drawing on the back there, um, we've got a ranch house uh, at 8 Silver Glen Road, and what we're planning on doing is uh, where our property lines are are 10 feet from the end of the ranch. So what we're wanting to do is get the variance so we can put a sunroom on the back, which is indicated uh, on the diagram, which is in the back of the property. There's no extension on either side. Right. As a matter of fact, there's an existing deck structure there, which is going to be removed, and it's going to be replaced with the with the sunroom. Um, this all this change goes back into the property, which is very long um, uh, lot in the back. So it's it's effectively adding uh, an additional two feet uh, to the existing deck that's already there. Uh, so we're not going to be going into anybody else's property mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I, again, I'll, I'll point out that we're not going to build on to the side, sides either way. Um, as as uh, your description said here, you know, it's, uh, it's a uh, legal non-conforming uh, structure. Apparently it was legal at the time when the house was built in 1958, is my understanding. Um, so, Again, we're not widening the house. We're not encroaching on nearer to anybody's property on either side of the house. Um, that's, I think the diagram pretty much shows what, what's there. Uh, by the way, uh, we're going to build this in such a way that all the materials uh, are going to be equal in equal quality or exceed quality of the existing structure of the house. Uh, the roof line uh, over this will be kept the same as the original roof line uh, on the house. Um, so if you were driving by the front of the house, you wouldn't even see this, um, uh, the structure there. It's just going in the back. And if you came from the back, you'd see the same shingling, the same uh, roof shingling, same color, uh, and the same, um, same siding color. We've talk to the contractor, all of that material is available. So it'll look like just an additional pump, if you will, coming off the back of the, back of the house. Yeah. any questions? Oh, I got no any questions. Karen? Fred? <coughs> I don't have any questions. It's just we've seen this situation before where people are kind of hurt by upgrades to our zoning system, our zoning uh, laws. and. Uh, they want to do that improvement. It's not going to affect the very next. It's not going to affect anything else as far as the side lots. The side lots. So mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with it at all. All right. No, I think it was. Fire? I, yeah, okay with it. Yeah, I'm fine. With I have one question for you. Yes. I didn't. I, I don't. At least I don't remember the reason that you're looking to get this. What's, what's oh, the reason. The reason for putting this is a quality of life issue for us. Okay. Uh, we want to, we're planning to uh, age in place in this property. Uh, we're going to be using it, uh, you know, the sunroom for a long time. Um, we can only use the deck. We cannot use the deck in the winter time that we have. But if we have a sunroom, uh, it's year round. Yeah, you can use it year round. Three seasons at least. Yeah, mm -hmm. three seasons at least. You didn't want to tell you you're going to have a few more kids. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought I forgot. It costs enough to get the sun put on to the children. Much more expensive. So. Okay, well, uh, no questions. We'll open it up. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Eric Mueller, um, live on Beckwith Circle around the corner. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't understand why, if you're not widening it from the existing structure, why are we asking for a variance to, to, um, to, to a five foot when it's already ten feet? If that's not going to change, why are we even here? Uh, I think you're, you know, the description of this, I think you're better off. Uh, I, I did not write this, uh, but my <laughs> understanding uh, is, so I'm, I'm a little new to basically, the terminology. Yeah, basically what it is, if you have a house that's non-conforming and you want to put an addition on, whether it violates the non-conforming condition or not, you have to come before the board so that they can look at it and make sure that it conforms with what we think should be in the neighborhood. Certainly. So now the neighborhood would require normally a low density, which is 15 feet. Medium density is 10 feet, which is where they already are. So why are we no. asking for a five no, foot? That's not true. No. So Doesn't it say, it on each side. Doesn't it say that they're 10 feet on either side? The it says the home is a legal non-conforming structure that is located 10 feet from the side property lines. The property is located in a zone that's uh, labeled low density residential. Right, I understand which that. Which requires 15 feet. Right, but if they're, they're illegal non-conforming at 10 feet, why are, why are we asking oh, for 5 okay. feet? Oh. Do, do, do you follow what I'm saying? If yes. you're not going beyond the 10 right. feet that you you're already look, are. You're looking at it almost in a common sense <laughs> so let, let me understand. You're not planning to go beyond the existing structure, left or right. No, no. absolutely not. This thing is, is is very poorly written. Then we well, didn't write no, it's, it's, it. No, I'm not saying no. it's written. It. Yeah, you have you have. If you looked at the picture, the structure is a legal non-conforming structure. Sure. Our law states that a legal non-conforming structure may not be expanded or changed in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Because he wants to improve the structure and, and add to I'm, it. I'm fine with that. That requires a variance. And the reason it's non-conforming is because it's only 10 feet from the sidelines. Right. But why is Mr. Grossman seeking a five foot left and right, right side yard setback? Because the total is 15. Because he would ordinarily need 15 feet on the side. do. He's got for it to be a conformity. Even so, even though, even though, so it doesn't grandfather that. into the existing 10 feet. No. Right. It, it, it's grandfathered. It is. It's grandfathered, but it's called legal non conforming. Okay. So anything he it's does, a, he needs permission, basically. It's yeah, a play yeah, on that's words. fine. It's just, yeah. I, I yeah, still, 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 the math doesn't <laughs> add up. You're, you're, you're yeah. both right, really. Yeah. Yeah. The math doesn't add up. No. You, you're asking why we're doing <laughs> this. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> Um, does anyone else have a comment on this particular application? <coughs> okay. We closed. There was no uh, no calls or letters, right? Really. Um, no calls, no letters. Comments? I agree with the I agree with the, the resident out there. <laughs> and I know that's the it's the legal the legal way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, so. Let's see, let's look at the criteria then. Whether the benefit can be achieved by the means feasible to the applicant? No. Undesirable change in neighborhood character of the nearby properties? No. No. Whether the request is substantial? No. The request will have adverse physical or environmental effects? No. no. And whether the alleged difficulty is self created? No. If he puts if he, you know, has some more children and they go in there maybe <laughs> um, but that's a no. So does uh, somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> is that the very visible? Second by Tim. Aye. 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 You're all set. Okay. Thank you. Just before Thank you. you start, um, stop the codes and get a building. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Therefore, the applicant is seeking an eight-foot left side yard setback area variance to add a front porch on a legal, non-conforming structure. Welcome. I'm Michael Felicia. I want to, I have a, we just put a porch on. Um, Mr. Rowling is my contractor. I wanted to, it looks so good, and I want to put the set roof on, which I'm going after now. For protection and enhance the value of the property. Don't have any got, um, before and drawings after factors. this point, but I have a picture. No, I think everybody's going to buy that. It's all, I think this is the one where the posts are, are up. Yes. Right? The posts are going to put up. the uh, top on. Yes. Yeah. Or you can be like the Olympics and put flags That's yeah. it. <laughs> mm. It was just a last man thought on his behalf as we were starting. He's like, you know, I got an idea. We so talked about that. I'm like, so then that's where it all started last month. So we're at just uh, just need to put a roof on it now. Okay. What? I don't have this question. All right. Yeah. I just, what did you fill out this form? Or who filled out the form for you? It was a team effort, I think. Who, who was the team? I just this is. <laughs> well, I got a, if you put, what you put it here is you put, will the proposed action result in a substantial increase in traffic? And you said yes. And I'm saying to myself, how do you put a roof on it? And have it you know, I figured maybe it would be so nice people would be coming by. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it. Okay. Thank I you. Don't I don't <laughs>
Okay. The application of Miss Sally Townsend, 9346 Sessions Road, Support, New York. Miss Townsend is requesting to add a roof to porch onto her home. The existing home is not conforming to the south end of the property line along Osmo Court. Zoning in this area is residential and agricultural and requires a 30-foot front yard setback. The applicant is requesting a 13-foot front yard setback area variance. Welcome. Thank you. You got it. Requesting a variance um, because the roof comes out into the area that it's not supposed to. So I'm requesting a variance. I know it said that you're, you're requesting to put on a roof, but the roof's already there. It is. And I didn't expect that it was going to be that way, but as it I was looking little, at the plans. went a little plans, too far? Well, well he, it he went was, as far as you wanted. It went further than what the. Yes. What, yes. What's allowable. Right. Exactly. Oh, you're all. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're also, you made a handicap accessible. I did. Okay. Aging in place. Aging in you know, place. It's kind of nice to hear other people are doing that. Okay. Uh, but my house is not accessible. And I learned that. Well, I knew that when I bought the house. But when I broke my arm and leg, I couldn't stay there. I had to stay in the door at the college. So I, the, the front porch was rotted, and I had to replace it anyway. So I thought since we're doing that, um, and I was going to have a little gable rather than that, the full porch, but then I realized that the water's going to run right off onto the ramp, and it's like, I can't have that. No, the ramp should be covered anyway. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Because it's you know it's what it's what it should be um, for folks who are aging in place. So uh, you know that kind of made me happy. Okay, let's take a look at the criteria. Whether the benefit can be achieved by other means feasible to the applicant? Uh, no. no. Undesirable change in neighborhood character of nearby properties? No. no. Whether the request is substantial? No. no. Whether the request would have adverse no environmental effects? No. Whether the alleged difficulty is self-created? With that said. Does somebody want to make a motion? I will make a motion to approve the applicant as stated. Second? Um, Fred? Aye. 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 You're all set? Thank you. Okay. See Joe for the very for me. I Menachi Associates, applicant for Utica College regarding property at 1489 Avenue in Utica, New York, town of New Hartford. The applicant is proposing a professional office at this location that is not permitted in a medium density residential zone. Thus, the applicant is requesting a use variance for the professional office. This application was tabled at the February 25th, 2013 meeting to be addressed in the Welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Since it was tabled, we have not really changed any of the application. We have just added this additional graphic to show. Can we get your name for the record? Sure. 
My name is Timothy Edner, E.B. and Okay, thank you. Um, right here is where we're talking, right? Exactly, yes. All right, so I have smaller scale here for people who would like to have a takeaway or would like to um, see it closer up. Thank you. So, and yes, you're right, this is the piece of property here. And uh, so the college feels that they can provide adequate parking here, here, and here, which would all be parking that is not existing on their campus now. This is all on their campus property. Uh, the license is proposing to have the faculty and students approach the building from what appears to be the rear now, not the Nye Avenue side. So that that way they will be able to mitigate uh, impact of parking or eliminate impact of parking on my area. So that was part of our application, but this gives a better um, picture of it. Okay. Is any, is, Go ahead. Is anybody here from the college? Hi, yes. Jack Peter. I'm, uh, I'm uh, the executive director of facilities and planning. Okay. There was a number of questions from 2013 from the residents, and I'd like to hear your take on them now when we get to that part. Yes, sir. Are you going to eliminate the driveway coming off of Niagara then? Um, no, we were thinking we'd just leave it so that it would stay pretty much the same appearance as it has now. It'd be an easy way for ambulances to get into it if they had to bring an ambulance to take somebody away. You want to see the kit with you, right? <laughs> I mean, well, I, I see a value figured, to it. With all the parking in the back, if everybody from the college is going to be using it, and that's the college is taking the wants to use it, <coughs> they'll make yeah. offices out of it. You've got two or three parking places on the front there where you go in the, where the overhead door is. If everything's going to come in for the back. But the end is for a college. I don't know. Is the college going to take it over? Is that going to be Niagara address still, or is it going to be something to do with the college? Niagara address. Be still an IM address, sir. I think the other thing, John, when the buses were parked, they come right through there, they come right through the circle. They were parked when I was here Saturday for the game, they were parked right here. So if an ambulance did have to come up to take somebody away, be, you know, they I, I think leaving it, we get to that part. Okay, I'm talking about the driveway, not the road. I no, I know, I know, but I mean, if you take it out, then you can see, you know, stretch it. We, we haven't changed, I'm reading the minutes from the, the old, uh, mm -hmm. the use hasn't, the proposed use hasn't changed. Is that That's correct? It's the same as what we're Every, Everything's the same. Yeah. Hours are the same, proposed? Yes. Fred, any questions? No. Well, what is the use that they are? I'm not seeing that. No, it's right. It's an office. Yeah, I don't have an office. office. It's a clinic. 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 It's a Yeah, I guess the neighbors uh, had a number of concerns about other properties and your properties and not being good stewards, we'll call it. Uh, I guess, what have you done about their concerns from back then? Because we will hear from them, I'm hoping, in a little bit. Or um, they stayed here to watch the fun, I don't know. Um, to give you a, an overview, um, this summer we uh, power washed every single one of our own buildings. Uh, the ones that were uh, um, 
we painted every single one of them, unless they were vinyl. Uh, so the four, this 1480s of aluminum structure, we painted it, changed the color. Um, we painted all of our, all, all of them, all of the buildings that we own on the street. In the back, we had uh, uh, an area uh, that's uh, basically a stream, not a stream, but in the back section of, of the properties along Niav, uh, there's a, a runoff that goes in the back. We cleaned all the way from our property all the way down to the cemetery, which backs on that side. Uh, we didn't want to go further down because one, it's not our property, but two, we cleaned out all of the all of the, the trees that had fallen, and we cleaned that area. Uh, in addition to that, across on the other side of Nyaf, we cleaned out the detention basin that was uh, that was that's a runoff from basically the fields and the football field, and we brought it all the way down. We cleaned that off, and we, uh, one of the properties was uh, thought that the water was running off from our, uh, our land. So we put a berm uh, to try to direct the water in, into a catch basin, and we did that also. Um, we also tried to um, fix the area where my, my uh, circle ends, and in many cases the fence was replaced. A lot of the, the walkways were, uh, were, were re, uh, re redone and repaved. And we also cleaned out the, the, the uh, retention basin on the other side of that, where you see that big large building there. Yes. We also cleaned out that as well. So we had made some significant, uh, um, significant um, changes one of which um, I tore down a garage, and then I get calls that I had to go back and clean up all of the, if you remember, Joe, I, I, I was aggressively pursuing getting rid of the garage too quickly, um, but uh, I didn't get a demo permit and I took it down, uh, but it's all gone now, so that everything that has come to our attention, we've tried to adjudicate and mitigate. Uh, we're trying to do as much as we can in the, in the area. Uh, one one uh, thing that uh, that's outstanding, there's a tree uh, that's along the line there. However, the tree isn't ours. Uh, it's not necessarily on our property. Uh, I've asked the uh, National Grid to come over and, uh, and remove it because uh, there was a concern that the tree may fall on their property. And I've already made several phone calls on that. And whenever uh, there, uh, an issue arises, we try to do what we can to, uh, to help the neighborhood. Another thing is, is there's a vacant plot of land down at the halfway down the street. And we cleared all, we tried to clear some of the fallen trees from the storm of last, I think it was last year. Uh, and we've tried to do that. So there's been, we've, we've put a significant amount of capital. We've tried to increase the, uh, the capital projects that we needed to do. And we're also trying to vigilantly uh, keep up the, the neighborhood with cutting the lawns and keeping it um, uh, positive. We've also done uh, some landscaping around each one of the houses. And uh, we continue to uh, try to make sure that um, we keep them in good shape. That's my question for now. Okay. Yep. There we go. Ten. I have one. How many properties does the college actually own on Niagara? Ballpark figures. Ballpark six, eight, ten. Where there's, um, I want to say seven. Uh, one of which is a lot of land. So that I think there's six buildings. Count this one. Um, yes. Okay. And just for the record, we're in the process of. Uh, of closing on two more, so there's two more that's going to be closed in, in a short period of time. And I'd have to get I'd, I'd have to get the numbers on those for you. No, the only reason I'm asking is when I came up that street Sunday afternoon, an awful lot of people walked up and down it. So I thought a lot of the houses that are even there that you might not even own are being used for 
college students. There, there are there are quite a number. When a lot of times we'll we'll get calls and we don't we don't own those houses. They're tenants of of, of the owners. So um, it, it's hard sometimes to to try to figure out which ones are they are they are they calling us for so we can take care of them versus uh, students or whatever that are being leased by the owner. So. Um, We'll take care of whatever the problem is when we get the call, and then we'll just we'll try to adjudicate it afterwards. But we'd rather be responsive and 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 deal with it than to just let it go. Yeah. Like I say, there was an awful lot of student activity up and down that whole street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I was just thinking along the lines of I I remember when that whole group of people was there. They they were talking more about. Um, not maintaining the premises and keeping it sightly and that kind of thing. Um, do you have some kind of plan in place for maintaining? Because now you said you're getting two more. So right, um, mm -hmm. like like I said, a lot of a lot of it was is that they had we hadn't power washed the houses, we hadn't um, painted them, we hadn't um, uh, cut the grass, we haven't uh, the garbage that comes in and goes out. Um, in that aspect, um, my group takes care of all of the, the grounds, mm -hmm. does the maintenance, does the facilities. However, we don't necessarily control the tenants, of, and usually they're part of the college. So the garbage taking out and the garbage being brought is more of the, our tenants, and we, we try to work with that. Mm -hmm. uh, my group is the one that tries to remove the tires that are in the backyards or, or that basically the physical aspects of the property. Any of the leasehold improvements mm -hmm. or any of the improvements to the capital structure of the owned properties is my responsibility. So is the plan to buy up as many of the properties as possible? No, we have, no. Um, the, the issue is, is that what we're trying to do is square off the property from where it is. So if you took a line basically from the, the show us and draw it on the on uh, Fred's. Uh, if you if you just it's not on here. So if you just well, took a, if you just take where the where the cemetery is. Where the cemetery is right here. No. Okay. okay. Right here is all we want here to to close to, to box it off, and then here and then all the ones down here. So the thing is that no, we don't want to buy up all the have. We only want to look at. Closing, you know, squaring off the property. What What do you currently have uh, in that unit now that's your mm -hmm. for? Right there, we had it was a it was a regular house, and uh, inside uh, inside of it is just uh, I think if you walk in, there's a kitchen and there's a few bedrooms. Is it occupied? Uh, yes. Did right now, two cars there. Right now, it's it's occupied, but also the, 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 in, in many cases. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know who's using. It, to be honest with you, it's something college related. It's not rented to no, 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 no. This is all college property. And right now, any of the properties that we own are are people that are with the college. Okay. So, so I guess from my, you charge them rent. Yes. Okay. In some cases, it's offset. In other words, if we have a coach and we are providing them with a with with housing, uh, it'll be offset. If not, we charge. But it's somebody related to the campus. Correct. It's not put the in the paper. No, and all of, and all of our own ones, it's 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 either one of two things. It's either it's either a, a coach, a student, or whatever. But it's it's not out to any of the other public that's without an association to the company. Okay. Fred, do you have anything else? No, no, sir. Thank you. Laura, are you? I do. I'm just wondering, uh, looking over the last minutes, um, when it was tabled, they were going to check into some of the specific statements, and I'm just wondering if that has been done. There was um, a Janet Cole, Laura Sally, and Mr. Hope, have, were those checked into? Yes, a lot of them. I, I think the, the busing problem and the fumes. 
Um, no. The 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 bus the bus uh, the buses that are there. We've tried to make them stop running the buses while they're parked. They're parked really at the end of the circle, uh, and uh, we've we've asked them to just shut off the buses when they're there. Now the thing is that that's a it's a Bernie bus company usually, and so we try to work with them. They're a vendor. We try to get them to stop. We don't have any buses for the college, so we, we outsource that. And a lot of times it's also uh, visiting sports teams. So it's, it's hard for us to go. We try to do what we can, uh, and, and that's, that's what we do. Well, a phone call to the DEC will help credit stop it. they got a five-minute rule in state law. Run if you let it idle for more than five minutes. Really, because I tried calling several places and yeah. I got nowhere. I didn't know that. I'll well, call next time. Truck the facility. Okay. You let them run for more than five minutes and they can be fined. So you got you got you got an arrow in your quiver to stop them from idling. I don't right. know about buses though. Maybe that's a different uh, truck still. That's a good point. That's their act fire net. And the, just so you know, the reason why the bus is parked there is because it's the closest place to the field and to the uh, gymnasium, which is which is right now. Right. That's where they were. That's where they were. It's not what you do about that. Okay. Anything? Does anybody have anything else for the? Uh, We'll, uh, we'll open it up. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? I guess I will, Laura, Laura Sally. My house is, you know, where they want to build a uh, change. No, no, no. My house is... The first no. one you pointed to is just that. That's my house. Okay. And I've lived there 54 years, and it's always been a very quiet residential area. And as I understand it, once a zoning has been changed, it can go on and on and on. And there have been some things that were corrected, but there have been some things that haven't. Behind my house, there's an apron where the buses have been parking and they have been running. And as for the water, when I used to go out in my backyard before the college was built, it was straight out. There used to, you to the uh, state hospital used to have fields, they'd grow vegetables and things. When the college started building and they built that road up, they built the road up and then when they were building that one dormitory, they put hard pack down on the downside. Yep. And they never dug that hard pack up. They just threw grass seed on. So when the spring snows melt, if we get a heavy rain, my backyard gets flooded. I mentioned that before. Along my fence, going up towards the house, they want to turn to an office. In the back part of the yard, it's just all shrubs and junk and garbage that is collected. They had a tree cut down and there were big logs left laying in the shrubbery. And that has not been touched. But I do think it should be left a residential area. Appreciate the comments, thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? And yes, sir. <coughs> I'm in the house right there in the corner right across. Yep, that one right there. Okay. I've had the bus problems before. I went to the college and they said there's nowhere else to park them. And they said if the best I could do is go to the emergency room and at that point they would address it. Something like that. Um, that's how severe it would have to get for them to address it. They're, they're just where they're prescribed to park. Um, I'm concerned about that house. Uh, the college has said many things to us before that they weren't going to do, and then they do. Um, they lean one way and then just quickly shift the other way at the last second. I've been through this for quite a few times, quite a few different instances. I'm concerned that they'll take that house, 
knock it down and put whatever they want there. Uh, can that happen once he's uh, once you would grant this no, this permission? We grant we're, 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 uh, yeah. it's specific of what they're looking to mm -hmm. do right now. Right, but and once you grant the, what they're looking to do is you know, it hasn't changed from the last as I asked them for sure. Initially, it hasn't changed from the last meeting. It's the first I guess you would say it's the first day clinic. Correct. Uh, three or four examining rooms, two visiting doctors would be on staff, a few other staff members, also a nurse practitioner. Facility would be for students only. Uh, 8.30 to 4.30 or 5, uh, depending on school hours and whether the school is in session, and walk-in hours would be 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. No overnight stays. So once you... So that's, that's what they're looking to do. Right, they can't just take this house, knock it down, put whatever they want. No. Once you, okay, that would require something else. Yep. All right, well, like Laura was saying, and he was just asking, is once this is permitted, it changes the structure of the neighborhood. It is now not just a medium density family neighborhood, it becomes a neighborhood that has a business or um, whatever they refer to that as. Um, and I don't think that it is in the best interest. I was looking up zoning laws and the zoning regulations must promote the good of all the people in the community rather than further the desires of a particular group. And the power cannot be invoked to further private interests that conflict with the rights of the public. And I feel that this building inflicts with my rights because it is my home and I would rather look at, even though the cosmetic is going to be a home with a driveway to accommodate an ambulance, that they're going to try to keep the way that um, it is and there'll be plenty of parking due to the parking lot they put on the side of my house that I was promised they would not put. Um, no, but no, where I, are you, where are you, what's your address? I, I live, I'm Janet Cole, oh, okay. I'm right across. Right across. And you know, okay. it, and it in looks Janet. like, it looks like quite a distance, but if you're standing in my kitchen, yeah. from my front window in my dining room, you only see the front of that home. You, it, it's it's right on top of you. I have that home, I have the parking lot and the extended Clark Athletic Center, which was not that way when I moved in. And I have a stadium behind myself. So all I have is my neighbor on the side and that home across from me. And if you allow that to become a part of the college structure, then I'm surrounded except for on this side, and that's my home. And I'd like each of you to ask yourself, would you like that across from your home? I mean, I'm surrounded by the college, but at least when I look out my window, I don't have a medical facility across the street from my house. That's my home. I've lived there for, what, 25, 26 years. I grew up on that street. We recently bought another home down the street that my son and his family now live in. Um, and I want to spend many years there. And I, I just hope that you consider my right as a taxpaying citizen that I shouldn't have to have part of the college infringe on the neighborhood. They're already surrounding me. Allow me that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on behalf of this particular application? Better than me. Okay. Um, I didn't see any uh, no, no calls or letters during LCM uh, We'll close. At this point, comments on the board? Byron, you want to start us off? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I, I think for the purposes of viewing the college in, in looking at the law for us, uh, even though I may be very well in favor of this because I think uh, 
I think that this won't be a detriment to the neighborhood. I think it's a positive thing for the college. But there's a provision in here that you didn't answer. And if you, if you look at it, where it says reasonable return, and the reasonable return you have to show in writing by a professional, and it's, it's pretty much written out here exactly as it should be about all of the uses that could be permitted in here and, and why the return, you're not getting a return that's reasonable. Now, in your case, and I think it helps your case, at least with me, I see that you're not running it to the outside. So in theory, you're only keeping it to within the college. And if you're thinking within the college, then maybe you've made the case. But there's nothing in rewriting that shows it. Well, then if, if, we, if, if we need to put something in writing for you, then we'll just defer it. We'll just mm -hmm. defer now and get something in writing to make sure that we abide by the law, make sure we abide by what sort of things, and to meet whatever requirements we need to be. Can you just anybody else agree with this? I'm, 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 I'm actually in agreement with Byron. I mean, if you really look at the... It's pretty specific. I, I, may, I may think, well, I, you know, what I think is one thing, but what, what's, actually, what's actually on here and what it actually states is such demonstration includes all of the following. So, and that's the difference probably between a use and, a, and an area variance. Uh, and those four... Are, cannot realize a reasonable return substantial as shown by competent financial evidence. The alleged hardship is unique and does not apply to a substantial portion of district or neighborhood. The requested variance will not alter essential character of the neighborhood. And the alleged hardship has not been self-created. Well, those are the those are what we have to actually. That's what we have to consider. Uh, I understand. So you if, if you, them, but you missed the first part, and, and with the application the way it is now, I have a problem. You know, voting in favor of it because it's just you, you didn't finish it. Okay. Well, then, then if if we table it, then if we table it, then let's come back. Uh, we'll we'll say, get something for you. No, Joe asked me how many times they can come back, and I said as many as you allow. What I would point out to you, Byron, is also they were required to put a statement of income and expenses. Yeah. That's the financial proof. You have to and prove that it's a hardship. Right. Well, you have yeah. to come forward with dollars and cents proof, proof yeah. that you can't use it for any permitted use in that district mm -hmm. and generate a reasonable return. Yeah. you got to define a reasonable, there's nothing here. And if you look at each one of the questions and then look at the answers, I don't think they answer any of the questions. I mean, they've put. There's more, yeah. They, no, they, was it for yeah. just put to get the return? Because if they're using it, <clears> how do they need collecting more. rent? Do they need it? What the, what the, if they can? If well, they, they say they're not collecting rent. But it according to this, they've attempted to. Though. Right. Yeah. It says the total gross income zero, and it lists some minimal expenses. So the question is, are they able? Could they rent it rent to it. a student and get a reasonable return? They have to prove they can't that. that they can't. They have to come in and bring an expert who's going to say, you can't use it for this, you can't use it for this, you can't use it for this, and get any kind of reasonable return. If you look at the questions, for example, not self-created, right. question four, um, their answer, the, listing, the listed zoning code site plan review uses for MDR district include library, school, public building, or use, daycare, special permit uses include community-based long-term care facility. Any of these or related uses fit into future plans that Utica College had at the time of purchase. Also, any of these uses may have fit into future needs of Utica College that were yet unforeseen at the time of purchase. One of the college's current needs that most appropriately fits this building is a professional office. I mean, I don't know how that answers that it's not self-created. Right. Unless, I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't see any answers to any of the questions that are responsive to the question that was asked. And like Byron said, while well, you may be in favor of it, when you look at the application, the application and what our obligation is legally, I think Curb stated it quite well then. So, I mean, um, how many times would we table it? I would give them another time, quite honestly, but it's not my 
decision alone is the board's. Do you understand so, what you have to come back with each each one? So, and if not, I will check, make sure I will come and, and visit and make sure that whatever um, you're required before <coughs> we come see you again, we'll have what we need. So, does somebody want to make a motion that, that, that if, if you're in agreement, to I will. I'll, I'll, I'll move that we table it um, yeah, until they come back with additional right. information filling up. Answering the questions. Yeah. Yeah, I'll second. Aye. 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 Joe? Do they have an indefinite period of time? No, the last one of the was always months elapsed. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they send you a letter that, that uh, said you take it off the case? Was there a letter that we can take you to the board? Six months. Six months. Within the next six months. Six months. Representing a private client, and uh, Mr. Cully, I watched him in action. He brought a terrific case in Article 78 against the city of Utica. He won his case. He did a great job. He was very articulate. He was clear. And uh, the other side just blew him away. And the judge just ruled right then and there. It's like back to the drawing board, folks. Sent it back to the ZBA. So it was a ZBA case. Yes. Use I saw it in the paper, so for a use variance, and then I, so I went. I it's went not for New Hartford, though. No. no, no, for the city of Utica. But I think it applies. The, the information well, applies. And I think Great the, job, Mike. And I think, that, uh, <laughs> I think that one thing that you ha we have to remember as a board when we're dealing at a use variance, the um, it's much harder to obtain a use variance. And I, I think they, I, I learned that when I went out to uh, down to New York when we used to go down there. Yeah. That it's it's very hard, if not impossible, to obtain a use variance. Well, in a self-created, it's an absolute bar. Right. If you find it self-created. Yeah. So, I can't argue about the self-creation. No, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. Yeah. Because they can turn around and just come So we have think they're not going to be one. No, no, I know, but for the use. That's the self-creation. Yeah, self-creation. That's right there. I'm going to pull that one. 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 <laughs> okay, we got one more to go. Ready? Everybody ready? The application of Mr. Stephen Carrot, who is requesting to build a single family home on a vacant lot on Stratford Drive in the town of New Hartford. The applicant's lot is not located on a public street and has zero frontage. Zoning in this area is low density residential, which requires 100 feet of frontage. Mr. Karat is seeking a 100-foot frontage area variance. This matter was tabled at the September 15th meeting to be discussed further tonight. 
Welcome back. Thank you. Oh. Good evening. So last month uh, when we left, we had one question okay. that needed to be answered regarding the status of the unpaved portion of Stratford Drive. Several hours were spent trying to determine how it goes in the county, and it was determined by specifically by the county that in an undeveloped, on an undeveloped road with a road name designated on a tax map, that any adjacent lots is set to own half of that road for its use in installing utilities and whatnot. The road being the town's, so it was, it's the town's road, but as far as use goes, the person adjacent to it would be able to use half of that road and they stated for utility installation. So you're required to pay for half of the utility installation? I'm paying for it all. I am? Yes. Yep. And then, so I'm glad that Mr. Sherman's here, but uh, my plan is to turn the street back over to the town mm -hmm. as a paved road, but I can't do it right away. So in my <coughs> write-up that I sent most recently, for the first probably 12 to 18 months, it would be stone, mm -hmm. which I would maintain until such a point I could have it paved and commission it to the town. Okay. <coughs> I, wasn't. I think I'm that sorry. was basically we discussed everything about that. Yes. You know, that's one and only reason yep. that we postponed this or, uh, to this. this uh, what do we have for the county? You said that you talked to the county. What do we have that, that from the county that actually... Nothing in writing. You just sat on the phone and in a visit there with a fellow named Chris. Okay. I wasn't here last week, so I'd like to bring myself up to speed a little bit. But are, are you going to put a road in there to town specs? Yes, most certainly. And a sewer and water main yes. and everything to town specs. Yes. And you're going to pay for it. Yes. Okay. Is that is that normal, Joe? Normal? A private developer or well, he's not a developer. He owns a lot. He can put a town road in, and somebody watches it, so make sure it don't meet the town spec. I mean, you put a road in, and if it isn't right, and they no, go up there to plow it. Any extension of a public road is a major subdivision which requires planning board approval. So, because he's going to put a road in there, it's a major subdivision, you're saying? It becomes a major subdivision. Well, then it's got to go to planning board, right? Correct. Why didn't we... Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't here last month. I'm just trying to bring myself up to speed. I understand, but I mean, everything, yeah. no one mentioned this at all. And everything was in place except for this one question. And this is the first time you're hearing about public road. Nobody knew there was. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have anything from the county that says anything either. Well, yeah, the, the, mean, the legal, what if, what the if legal I... problems, uh, I asked Rick to be here. Rick, yep. the first question I asked, uh, because there was an inference the last time that this was a town road, and I know Mr. Parrott just said it's a New Hartford town road. Rick, did you search the records? Is this a New Hartford Town Road? It's a paper. It's a paper street. Okay. Off of the existing Town Road. Has yeah. the town ever accepted dedication of this road? The paper street? Yeah. No. All right. There's no deed for it to the town. No. I then checked with Darlena Batacola because she was referenced in a letter submitted by Mr. Karat, and I asked her as to whether or not. She had referenced this, uh, and, and she said from her research, this is op owned by a uh, family trust. Okay, so the question becomes, does he own the land that he's proposing to give you a road over? She said it's owned by some family trust. My, my family's that, trust. That I don't see any permission or any deed giving him the right to go forward with that. I then called. I then called Chris. I then called Chris. I then called uh, Chris Birch at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Who's Chris Birch? Well, county. in his letter he says, after hours of research with the County of Oneida and Mrs. Abaticola, it has been identified that, quote, 
in where there is a documented road where pavement ends, any lots adjacent to that road shall be considered to own half of the width of said road. Um, so I asked Chris if he said that. He said, no, I, I never said that. I don't recall ever having spoken to Mr. Karat or having told him that. Now what Mr. Karat's referring to, and I've been through this um, time and time again because I'm also the attorney for the village of Oneida Castle, and we had uh, a, a group of paper streets that the village owned but never developed them. So the village abandoned the streets. And under section uh, 207 of the highway law, it says that if you discontinue a road, in other words, you're not going to use it anymore, then that, that property passes to the owners of the land on both sides of such highway or street um, so that each gets half. And that, that's what I think he's talking about. But that's not the case here. The town doesn't own this road. The family trust owns the, owns the road. But we don't pay tax on it. She says it's, a, it's on the tax map. That's what she told me. What's the trust well, it's on the tax map. Oh, she told me that the, 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 it's yeah, included it somewhere else. as owned by the that. trust. Okay. So, okay. Mr. Birch gives me a totally different version than what Mr. Garad is saying. Um, and the reference he's making is where, if this was a town road, and the town had gotten a deed for it 50 years ago and never built the road and said we're abandoning it, then it goes half to each of the property owners. That's what he's talking mm -hmm. about. That doesn't apply here. It's not a town road. So if he goes, if he goes to the, uh, Trust. the town board, the planning board, the planning board now. Right? He can't. No, he's got to get can't. the variance first. Okay. Right? You can't go to the planning board to get a variance. He's got to get a zero frontage variance, then he'd have to go to the planning board, he'd have to extend the road, but he's asking you to give him a zero variance when it doesn't appear that he has even deeded access to get the lot. Doesn't he have to have deeded access? He's got to own it, sure. Yeah. And well, I, does he have to own it or does he have to have a right to it? He has to have a right to get there. Which okay, I so, do, and I could supply you. Well, that, but that's it's, not here. I mean, that's the right. stuff you have to see. You should really get a lawyer and have the lawyer really get into this, and I'll work with the lawyer if you get one uh, to try and do this the right way. Because you're, you're kind of spinning your wheels. Yeah, but her, you not, said you talked not, to Chris. The, Chris said to me, never talked to I did. That's, I'm yeah. very, I did. In front of Darlene. Hours before you, before you called. So. Oh, you just talked to him today? No, before you called Darlene. The I day talked that to I Darlene prepared, and Chris today. You, you spoke with Darlene the day I, the day you yes. received this, that afternoon is when we called Chris together. So I don't know why he told you that, but I certainly don't misspeak. Um, so I guess if if that's how we're going to approach this, I can't find a deed to that, and I don't think my family pays the taxes on it. If she, I mean, I'll do what I have to do to obtain that. But I don't think one exists. I've you can talk to Darlene I tomorrow. Will. I talked to her today, and she said the family trust owns that land. Okay. It was never deeded out of the family trust. Family now, that's family. what the tax map is showing. Right. But uh, your better course, get an attorney, have an attorney pull the abstract the title, and do it the right way. How do they pull it? Okay. All right. They're going to have to search the abstract the title to the property to determine who owns it. Well, it's in the family it's trust. It's in the family trust. That's what I'm saying. Right, I'm saying so, it isn't. <clears throat> no, I'm saying... No, it if, is in the family trust. It is in the family you trust. You just said it's but not being be taxed. taxed. Right. If it's in the family trust, I have every deed that we own in that family trust, and that portion of the road isn't one of them. Didn't he just say it's not in the family trust? I don't, ha I don't have the deed that says that it is. So For if in fact road. it is, I'll get that deed. For the paper, for the road part of it, no problem. So then, because all of this is all right, all of this, this whole section. Yeah, he is said he's not paying taxes, taxes, but Darlene said it's being taxed under the family trust. I have so to see her and, 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 and yes. there should be tax receipts for that, then, right? Yeah, but somewhere. Your pastor was saying to turn it over. So then I went. Easiest way to do it. Just, I, I got a question here, though. It, it, um, 
Okay, here's the map. Here's the road. I drove down here, parked my car over here, and I'm looking, right? Yeah. Are you saying that if he gets access from here, we could make a motion then, if we so chose, to approve it subject to him getting access? Well, if he has access, in other words, let's say somebody deeds this strip of land to him. That important is nothing but a driveway. Right, it's that's a driveway. It. It's a fine. private driveway. Sure, private and driveway. here's his yeah. road frontage right, right there. He's got 60 feet of road frontage on a private driveway. We've given variances yeah. for some folks to build one house. So, but Mr. That, Brown, that, I, I want to clarify something. Sure. You never approached me about a public road. You approached me about a driveway. That's why you're here. If you wanted to do a public road, I would have set you on the course of going to the planning board and proposing a major subdivision and developing the property. Okay, that's originally not what I wanted to do, and that's still not what I want so to do, you want but to build I would a have house done it. Yes. Or you want to put a public road and you're in the right place. Okay, then that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay. I offer the, the road there? portion to the parents of the piece to the town the so that they would know that I will pay yeah, them. Yeah, put the I don't want them. I prefer this way. If, if, if you're doing it this way, I prefer I, this way. Just for. Okay. Do what, what, I don't have. If he, if he, show, if he shows right. that he can get access in writing, I don't have a problem. <laughs> Going, uh, for the road, having having access, so it's like what Joe just said. It becomes a private driveway, yes, right, right. and his family trust gives them a deeded access, permanent, whether it's a, on the land or it's just a, an easement, a permanent easement. I don't have a problem. If we pull the board and ask him, then he can have the direction to go in. They can either spend the money or not spend the money. But if he extends that sewer and that road, yeah. even though it's really going to be called a driveway. It's got to be the top specs. Exactly. Not, so he's right. not if he's just driving. No, he's just driving. Just the private driveway. Just the private driveway. He well, if he decides he well, wants to go back to the sewer lines or something. It's, uh, it's like a, a yeah. long lateral. Well, yeah. I know. A tie into existing. Yeah, existing just like the guy that originally did. At the other end, I made him do a yeah. yeah. manhole and a sewer wrap. Right. And a ladder goes into that. They extended that sewer. Yeah, you do the, the same thing here. Yes. Pardon? The full width of the line. When you're talking. 60 Word. feet. 60 feet. That's a But it's on private property. Right. It's not on public road. Depending on where that manhole is, for that ladder to go in. Right, by elevation. I had the same issue at on Stratford Drive at the other end. Yes. And they had their frontage, they took that lot, and I made him extend the sewer line down with a manhole. But that's a little, that's a little different. There was still public road available to right. extend the right. main right. in. Right. Right. But I don't know where this. I don't know He's where this main nothing. is. Is oh, it here? Oh. Is it down at the end of the road? I don't know where that main is. Right. Well, that'll be done in engineering phase. All right. But on his private property, he could extend it like a ladder. Right. Right. Perfect. Right. Well, you would pull. Uh, if he did, well, then we yeah. then we'll try. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. King. Yes. What I'm hearing is we can uh, we can approve this if in fact that he can show that he owns the property. Correct? Or, I don't think we can approve. I don't think, we, I don't think we have enough information to approve the well, right, he's, I mean, But I guess the point he I'm really trying to make is he's, he's got to show that he owns the property. Yeah, he's got to do it. Well, is that I mean, no, what I'm saying is that the six or eight. Wait, wait, wait. There's two issues. Yeah. 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 One, the one, the one, the one, the one, the two issues. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He doesn't have continuous ownership of that land in the road because there's a lot still not owned by the family, correct? Right. He plans on buying that through the county. That's one issue. That's the big issue. The other issue is the ownership of this drive, future driveway. Is it in the family trust? Is is it being taxed? So did you get well, that? There's two issues. Well, I thought that was the road. Are you talking about the road or the drive? I thought you said he could have the driveway. Well, yeah, but there's one piece missing. This or is the property. This will build it. Right. He doesn't own this. Yeah. According to what uh, he this own, this would own part of this road based on what Herb said. Right. Yeah. So that would be in the way. Of this access, mm -hmm. this, this person might have an equal right to this 
rope, this portion of the rope mm -hmm. that would block access, correct, Mr. Pratt? Yes, that's correct. See, okay, so but that fit, that lot is unusable. Is unusable. But owned by somebody else or the county? For the next two months, it's owned by the county. And then okay. So this issue has to be cleared up, and then this issue has to be cleared up. Who, who owns this piece of land? And if Mr. Corrat could get this in his possession. Right. Mr. Corrat, let me ask you, you attach a bill here, this is the room. and you right. say right. will be owned by Stephen Corrat at February yes. 1 auction. Am I correct? You're going to go and you're going to bid at the auction? Yes. You have no assurance you're going to get it, though. I, I can assure you I will get it. Well, what if I go and I outbid you? Please do. I'm not stopping. I need that lot. To make this all so you don't own the lot as, right. as we sit here you're applying on a lot that you intend to buy yes at an auction in february but you have no assurance you're going to be the successful bidder correct and then you attach copies of the nck living trust yeah with marianne and teresa as the trustees they own the land where the road is they own the land where the Where road you're is proposing the your driveway is going to be. That's the entity that Darlene told me owns. That's my, yeah, that's our family's trust. But the portion of Stratford Drive that we're referencing right now isn't described in any of those. Unless you see something different. I can't find it. It's not. This is the Kiram family yes. irrevocable yes. trust. That's what she told me. Yes. Owns the. the "Quote unquote road." Okay. So I think you need to straighten that out and see if, if, if they, they truly own that road. He wouldn't need to buy that lot, then, correct? Sure, he's got to no, get access. Still the county's yes. Still the county uh, owns the. He's applying on a lot he doesn't own. He's right. applying on a lot that he's going to go in February right. and, and bid on. I mean, he really he should wait till February to see if he is a successful bidder before he goes forward. And he does. I don't know where they're standing. To apply for a variance on a lot you don't own. But did you it's like coming and applying on my lot. Did you just, did you just, just, did you just said that he could, we could grant him a variance on building a single dwelling on a lot that he owns, which right. is number he one. He doesn't own it. Which is the lot number one. It has nothing to do. The only thing that that lot number two right. is throws a wrench in is the access to my lot. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right. Right. Because you're not going to be able to get there without it. Yes, I could. I could use seven. So this lot two really to me, I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to get it, but it doesn't shouldn't be in effect right now because if I don't get it, and the person that gets it doesn't allow me access, I'll just use this paper street number seven in place. My purpose is to get a variant so I can proceed with things. I need to order the house, I need to get engineering involved, I need to figure out water, sewer, national grid. That's, so that's the purpose here. You should have a here. purchase contract with the Karam Family Trust showing you as the purchaser of the lot and the purchaser of the land where the road is going to be. That's what you need. But if he only it's wants a, to use lot number one and just put a driveway there, right. what does he need to do there without to show using proof. number two? He needs to show that he has a contract to buy it, it's signed by the owner. It's just getting turned over by the seller. trust, and it was included yeah. in the original and package. And he needs to show that he has a contract to buy that strip of land, a right of access over that strip of land to put a driveway. I mean, you really should just get an attorney. It'd be much easier. Huh? Because it's too many. Get it all squared away at one shot, right? And it's the easiest way. Yeah, to just handle all the issues because there are there are a few of them. Do you have proof of the ownership? Yeah, it's in the family trust. Once the variance is issued, the deed will be transferred. Okay, but, but I mean, you have something to show yeah, us. Yeah, it was in the original application. You have a contract. Letter of permission. Buy? Letter of permission to build on it. In the, the original trust. application. The but how about the road? No, not the road. But going back, say, forget the road for a minute. Right. Does he, is he able, with this permission, yeah, if, if he yeah. has that, can he put a driveway in Well, there? I'd like to see a contract for the purchase of it rather than a permission. Even if it's a dollar. on somebody else's lot. Do you have it? There's Maybe? just a permission letter that was in the original packet there, written by parties in the trust. 
See, what, what I think what I'd like to do is... I think we're putting the cart before the horse. I, yeah. know, I know what you want to do. Just take a poll and say, would we be interested if he gets all the required things, then he can come back when he's got them all. We did that last month. Yeah. Yeah, but, but and the only question. Details. It was only a little more details that came up because if he's got to spend a bunch of money, he might as well know what, how we're, what our feelings are, if everybody's against it or favor of it. If he gets all the permission that he needs, and he gets this lot. Can we make the phone call verbal permission and conference call right now so that we could resolve it tonight or no? I, mean, I, I don't could, have any I problem could. that you're going to get it. All right. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm not understanding what, if, if, he, if we had written permission, not everyone in a trust sells it, sells a portion. They right. just sometimes you know, right. get it. Oh. Or if, if and it we would be acceptable. And we haven't asked everyone else to do be, that. I'm not following. If it would be acceptable by the board to either approve or disapprove of the variance pending with a stipulation that the letter must be provided to Mr. Booth prior to the building permit, I would be 100% fine with that. And there's a, there's just a lot that I have to put out there and not know which way to go. Well, this looks like it's permission from the Karams to go forward um, to build a single family home on a lot that they own. So I think that meets, uh, it's not a deed, so it doesn't prove uh, that it is going to be conveyed, but I think that's sufficient to give them permission to go forward with their application. Still doesn't deal with the road. Right. Well, I still go back to my original. Oh. What about future construction? There's still a bunch of lots I'm about to describe. Well, then that would go to the planning, wouldn't it? No. no. Coming, Coming here. Right lot five. See, lot five is the problem with the girls, right? They wanted to build and do the same thing with the, the driveway. So then well, I would grant them use of my driveway. I mean, that's all. Fa I understand right. what you're saying, legality yeah. wise. I'm I'm ready. Ready. I, you know what I mean? I would just grant permission for yeah. that lot is already given to somebody and they've begun clearing it and doing what, you know, making it less okay. mosquito y. And really, it's not his responsibility to worry about what that next question is if he's coming for a variance for this particular lot. But, I can but see except you're... for we don't, usually things are not done based on speculation as to something that is going to happen in the future. Right. You have to show that it's, that it's a current um, entitlement or right that you have for the property. So. So I, I would really but say just get a lawyer and let them handle all the different issues. I think, I mean, I believe that that's, in other words, it's a family uh, agreement, so to speak. Everybody will be involved and it's not going to be a problem. But what are you asking for, though, Karen, of the, if he's got permission for this? He doesn't have, he doesn't have, he doesn't have any way to get to here. I do. Well, that's not what I do. the... I could use my lot side. But that wouldn't help him. Right now, use my last yeah, 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 yes. yes. That well, it's the trusts. The letter. Okay. The letter. Randy, you have the letter. Does it give? Does it specify lots? No, no, no it specifies no lots. It's no lot. The family's property. But are, and are you specifying? Is he specifying it in this request? What we're talking about? Well, it specifies that he's getting the lot to build on. From the trust, they're yeah. approving him going. Yeah, but now we're taking the But it, it, it doesn't specify the just road. For access, it just doesn't. For it doesn't specify the road or driveway or access. That's the problem. Right. Plus, if, if if they deed the driveway to him, what happens to all those other lots? You just cut them all off. He owns the, the access. What about everybody else that has these quote unquote paper lots along that street? You've cut them all off. Oh, my well, yeah, but he doesn't have to deed it to him. We, we no, it. I know. He can do it as a permanent easement. But I, I agree. Sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's why I'm saying just get a lawyer. It, it's, it's not complicated. Okay. It isn't that complicated. A lawyer for this particular variance? Well, to put it all together. 
You're going to need to get a lawyer to do the conveyance. Anyway. Anybody to vote on this tonight? Wait a minute. If they're, I'm not. Are you? If because uh, it doesn't take much for an attorney to put it together, it'll be done and it's over. And then he never has to worry. Either. Mr. Colley, because you've got knowledge of the cir circumstances, is this something that you could? Oh, absolutely not. It'd be a conflict. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you for. If Herb, if they, but well, doesn't Herb, take much for an attorney. Herb can refer to you. Herb, him to get it done. Herb, you right. can refer him. No, you can't. You can't no. refer him. That's fine. I'll I'll use Mr. Blake. I just I figure since we know about it, it'd be easier to. And quit but I'm sure that Herb said that he would work with whoever. Absolutely, I work with Peter every day of the week. I'd be okay. happy to work with him. All right. right. They're working on loud on the parcels that are marked mark number five right now. There's going to be a house there. No, no, no. But just, it's, it's a greenhouse. Let's get the attorney get oh, okay. to It's not. It's, it'll never oh. be built on, ever. Oh, okay, because I'm going to say that you put the school line all the way down. Oh, no, no. Go to the attorney. Get your own that lot. All right, so what would a piece of board? A permanent use easement of the road? That's the only thing that we need to cover right now, correct? The Your attorney will contact the town attorney, correct? Well, that's what we're looking for. Permanent, okay. To be shared with others, with the trust retaining ownership, giving you a right of ingress and egress to cross over it to get to and from your property. Okay. And then, and then, then that are, shows you have access. All right, good. Okay. And it now, doesn't cut off the trust's other property. Okay, now if the sewer line ends up where number the circle number four is, that's where the water main ends. Wait a minute. That has nothing to do with the no. permission of the block. But if he's going to have to go on the sewer line and the water line that far, why not put the white stuff in once instead of throwing good money after bad? What do you mean good money after bad? Nothing else will ever be built on that. Nothing else will be built. Ever. Nothing else will ever be built there? Not until oh, I die. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought no. these were all going to be built on lots. No, no, no. Okay, like I say, I wasn't here last night. There's a house actually yeah. right here at number three. There's already uh, a structure there. Okay. Okay, so I'll do I'll do this, mm -hmm. no problem. My only question is this. Could we do an email type vote or does this have to wait until next month? I'm running out of time. When, I can have this done tomorrow. What's this? What's well, the snow. Done? I gotta get the back of some bulldozers oh, in there oh, I see. to start, start before the ground freezes. Is it common practice that something could be issued via email to all the members? And call a special uh, meeting? No. 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 You don't do the email. Okay. It has to be a public meeting. And it has to be proper notice. They can only act there in a public meeting. The, because it was, okay. Because right. it was tabled. Yeah, it was tabled. So Would you ask for a special meeting? Been sent. So it May I request wait. a special meeting? You can, you can ask, but they can do it. it. It depends on how. Day, you know, night, I don't care when. It depends Whatever. on getting everybody together. I really don't. I know. You can't. I really don't. Your weather's killing you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have any problem with that. With a special meeting? Yeah, but, um, but but the thing is, we have to publicize it so that other people can publicize it. Joe, is that true? Yeah, it doesn't have to be republicized. It's tabled, it doesn't have to be republicized. It doesn't have to be republicized. It change this one wasn't. Yeah, but if it's tabled, Herb, it has to come up at a, a regular next meeting. Never going to have it. Can I come here? No, especially. We, we do have another meeting. I want you to know November 10th. We do have an oh, agenda start. We do have an agenda started for November 10th. Okay. Thanks. that. It's three weeks away. Yeah, too long. Wait, I'll, I'll, Wait a minute. I'll, I'll, just, that's, if that's the next meeting, that's three. It's probably going to take both that long to get around, isn't it? It would, should. Yeah, it can't happen. You might need to get doing all this. You might need that time. Fine. Yeah. Your turn might need that. All right, so November 10th, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. Yep. Dory, do I have to come and see you let first? Me know, please let me it's, know a while, a while before the meeting whether you're coming. I'm coming. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know, no, I know, but I want to make sure I'm that coming. he gets to see what you've got submitted and everything right. else. Yeah. Well, just gonna have we have to go through the same copies again. Yes. Correct. Yes. So, Mr. Blake, will call you tomorrow, sure. and you guys, whatever it takes. You've got to make a motion to table it. I'm not going to be tabling the request until uh, the next uh, November meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. 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 Second.